I have been using this strategy since I learned about it back in 2019. Since then, I have made a multitude of videos on this strategy, not just because it's great, but because it can take down every single beginner map, every single intermediate map, including this painstakingly, annoyingly difficult bazaar, the expert map Dark Castle that you saw earlier, and many advanced maps, including another brick that we just turn into another beginner map with this easy strategy. So today I'm gonna to show you how to build this amazing druid strategy from the ground up so you can use it to get many, many, many black borders in this game. Now for this strategy, I'm gonna show you on the map that I learned myself and that's going to be Monkey Meadow. It's a very easy map for this strategy and you can kind of get your feet wet before you jump into those harder maps. Now your start's gonna be pretty much different for every single map. For this map, since it's easy, we can use a ninja to start with no problems, but on Bazaar, you're gonna start with three dart monkeys. On Dark Castle, you're gonna start with a dart monkey and a sub. Now your main goal for every map's gonna be pretty much the same and that's gonna rush to get your Oban. Oban is arguably the most important part about this strategy because you get not one, but two little buffs above their head showing that Oban's just making them super strong and super buff to take down everything in their way. You may need a lot of towers and a lot of upgrades before you get to Oban depending on the difficulty of the map. But for this map, we can literally just get a 100 ninja, which will lead to Oban. Then we can place Oban right here and you wanna place him pixely perfect in this top left corner, just like that. And then the next thing I do is I start getting my main damage tower up. For this one, we're gonna be using the ninja because you can see camo right off the bat, so you don't have to worry about too much. But like on Dark Castle, my main tower was going to be my airburst darts with an advanced intel, boosting off the camo and the range of the dart monkey. And you're just gonna want like a basic tower just to kind of get you through those early camos and those early rounds while you build your druid army. And this double shot ninja will be more than enough to carry us through as we slowly and perfectly place all these little druids. I always recommend you do this in sandbox first. It's terrible to jump into a chimps game, get into the 20s or 30s just to find out that you have terrible spots for your druids. And if it wasn't for sandbox, there is no way I would have gotten that bizarre chimps with these druids because they had to be placed in these perfect spots to make them all reach each other. It was madness. But for this one, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a little track right here of all six of them. Now what you're gonna want to do if you guys didn't know this little tip is you can click when it's red and then that allows you to move your mouse or your finger off of the monkey and then you can slowly place and get those pixel perfect placements to where you can just place anything in any spot pretty much and that's what we're trying to go for here is to get like all six of them this tiny little area so they all reach each other look at how close all these druids are together that is perfect so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get thorn swarm druidic reach i always have a trouble saying thorn swarm druidic reach on all of these guys and we're just gonna kind of piggyback off each of them every single time we just decide to upgrade these guys just like that. And what you're gonna wanna look for is that your druids are in range of each other. And he's not quite there yet, or he might be, but once we get the village down there, he definitely will be. And they'll all be in range of Oban once we have the village on them as well. And as you can see, they already have the one little Oban buff above their head, they'll later have two. Now the next most important part is placing this village. On harder maps, it might be a little bit more difficult to make sure they're all in there, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you can get them all in there right like this but they're not quite, as you can see, some of them are outlined, but what you can do is just get that little bigger radius upgrade and now they all have the village buff. This is perfect. Now, if one happened to slip through and you're on like a beginner intermediate map, do not worry guys. I've actually beaten this with five and I've used five plenty of times before I even realized that you had to have six to get the full buff and I've had no problems with that either. One of the hardest parts in the Druid strategy for me though is round 40, just because you really don't have that much popping power for Moabs anyway. These are kind of weak little dudes over here at the time. Once they get to pop less, they're gonna be super cool, but for now they're really not. So you gotta find something that will make them strong. So let's throw an Alchemist. Now with the Alchemist, the Druid strategy gets a little tough because the Alchemist just throws wherever he wants to, but the one he's closest to should be the one that he hits the most, which is going to be our main guy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to Berserker Brew, and for this one, let's do faster throwing since he's gonna be throwing it all over the place anyway. Might as well make sure you can just throw it a bunch. And that is the one that he put it on. That is a good thing right there. With that said, the fact that he keeps throwing it at this monkey, this is going to be our Avatar of Wrath. If he was throwing it at this monkey the most, then you want that to be your Avatar of Wrath. Your Avatar of Wrath is going to be the monkey that has the most Berserker Brews and it's eventually going to be a stronger stimulant so he can be crazy strong once you get him. The next little milestone for this strategy is going to be the Camo on 42. Depending on the tower that you chose to go strong or how many towers you have down that can see camo you might be okay on this map we'd be okay but i always go and get the radar scanner before round 42 and i'm using the druid strategy just to be safe and don't forget guys you do have your brambles please use your brambles on round 40 just because and any other round that you might find scary because that's what they're there for and the next step is easy we're just going to go around and we're going to upgrade all of them to pop lust but the last one or whichever one you don't want to, we're just not gonna get all six. We're just gonna get five for now because I wanna save that extra money so we can get the Avatar of Wrath faster and make this way simple. 
Here we go with that fifth pop lust, and I assure you five will be fine. I mean, I guess depending on the map, but I had no problems just waiting for five on Bazaar and Dark Castle and another brick and probably a lot of those advanced maps as well. You're not gonna really need that sixth one just yet. So 55 sort of poses a problem on some maps. So we just went through the first ceramic rush. There's the second. As you know, there's gonna be four of them. On that fourth one, it's a little overwhelming depending on the map and how much time you have to hit these. So you're gonna always wanna throw your Bramble down just to help it out a little bit. Like maps like Bazaar is gonna be a little tough for 55 just because you don't have much room to hit. You have that one little straight line and then it just kind of goes away. So you're gonna need your Brambles. If that's not working for you, you can upgrade to your stronger stimulant as we are going to do a little bit later on. I just kind of wanted to save up the money as long as we can, but we are going to go for stronger stimulant before we get this guy to the Avatar of Wrath, just because it makes it easier. So we might as well just do it now. Grab that stronger stimulant and it's going to make the rest of this stuff pretty chill for a while. Next is going to be round 60. This should be no problem for what we have here, but I did not even have this back when I learned this strategy and back when I was abusing this strategy on every map, I did not have this, but now you can place Oban's trees wherever you want to. Now that may not sound that crazy to you, but when Oban randomly places the trees behind the balloons that you want to pop, it's the most aggravating thing. But now that you can do that, always just place Oban's trees at the far back as you can. And all you have to do is just destroy that Moab, what is this thing called? A BFB. And as soon as it breaks down, the Moab layers drop that thing or drop it earlier. It really doesn't matter. And if it didn't make it through, like if the balloons got through your little defense there, the Moabs would just get cleaned up by your tree and you'd be good to go. I'm not kidding, guys. This wasn't here before, but I am so glad that it is now. So use this to your ability and just go crazy with it because it is amazing. And normally I would not recommend using your tree on round 60 like I just did there. I was just showing you an example. You are going to want it for round 63. On this map, you have like 65 different times to like hit the balloons when they go around the top, the bottom, the side, the left. But on other maps that may have only one turn or no turns and they're kind of straight, you want to save your tree for the end of the map on 63 to kind of suck up whatever your druids can't get. And then from here on out, I just recommend that you use your brambles and your trees when you see fit and just wait until you get that massive amount of money, $48,600. Another round you may have trouble on is gonna be 75, 76, and 78. As you can see on 75, you have stacked BFBs. I think they're stacked BFBs. This makes it a little crazy and you get a little overwhelmed. But on maps that have a ton of turns like this, not gonna be a problem. Same with 76, not gonna be a problem, which leads me to this next part right here. You're probably wondering why I don't go with this one right here. Well, attacks convert regrow balloons into normal balloons. We don't need that because our village does that for us, right? And so that's why I'm not wasting the money. 380 times six, you know, that's another, what's that? Two grand or something like that? Not worth it. You don't need it. But to be safe, I would recommend putting your tree at the end of the track on the end of 75. And then that will help you clean up whatever is on 76. And then by the time 78 comes around, it'll be regenerated so you can have it ready for that rush if it does get to that point. But as you can see, we're wrecking it. You might have a little bit of trouble with the second half of 78 because there are camos. So if that's the case, then save this for that. You have your little buffed up dude here who's going to do most of the damage. And honestly, we're going to have it right before the end. That's really, really cool. So on this map, you end up getting it before that second rush, which is really nice. And that's why I saved the time and save the money of buying this one until later because we can get this Avatar of Wrath way sooner. So if you can go that route, stick with just this ninja, stick with just an airburst start if you're on a water map and just ride it out with those five druids until you can get the Avatar of Wrath and then you can upgrade this guy to Pop Lust. And then our next step is gonna be getting this guy to MIB because as of now, we cannot pop those DDTs unless the Alchemist hits this guy, which you know the odds of that happening when you need it to are like, one in a million. So we're going to go with that MIB so they can all pop those DDTs. After you place your MIB down, the next step you're going to do is you're going to be placing a spike factory at the end of the map. Now, if it's a double lane map like Bazaar, you're going to want to place it to where it can hit both, but you're going to want to focus mainly more on the side of a map that has the rounds like 98 and 100 because 100 is really what we're aiming for here because we need to pop that big old bad. But on this map, it's just one lane, no big deal. We're going to go all the way to the bottom and all the way to the top. And depending on your preference, you can put it on normal, but I like to put it close so they get super, super tight in one spot because it looks really cool. I used to go with the middle path for the spikes, but then I learned that they're not much different. At least I was told they're not much different. And I think the top path's better. Well, either way, it doesn't really matter for us with this strategy. It's just a cleanup pretty much. And it just will pop like the remaining layers of the bad. So we're just going to go for the 204. We're going to alk it. We're going to village it. It's just going to be this crazy strong set of spikes. 
and usually somewhere in the early 90s you get enough for that perma spike you're good to go there then i like to get the village so you can get super strong now it does matter where you place your village on certain maps so if your perma spike ends up being kind of close to your other towers you want to watch where you put the village and the alchemist because you do not want the alchemist to be buffing a bunch of different towers you want to make sure he's only hitting the spike so they get super 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 strong you're gonna go all the way up to stronger stimulant stronger acid look at that perishing potions because he's just focused on that one tower right there now this guy's gonna be way too strong clean up everything now 95 you just got to watch 95 because i love it i love the satisfaction of just this guy just wrecking through everything one of my favorite rounds right here let me know if you guys have the same favorite round below now with what we have here we could probably actually finish the game and beat the bad because this map is so easy but if the map doesn't have as many twists as turns as monkey meadow does you may have a problem on let's say 98 because you will eat up a lot of your spikes leaving you kind of vulnerable for 99 and then definitely on round 100. so one of the things i like to do depending on the map is i like to put this little guy here and then i get the top path up to embrittlement and then the middle path and that weakens these guys so when these guys shoot their little projectiles it just destroys them and it makes it really cool but now we have to decide on what we're going to do for round 100 depending on the map now if you're just going to be playing in a water map you get a first strike and you blast that first strike at the beginning of round 100 and that'll definitely clear everything up but on other maps that might need might not be possible just like this one so you're like what do i do well for this map you're good to go as it is but what you can do is you can just throw random towers down like a sniper to take some damage you can get this guy just get some overdrives just put as much damage on this bat as you can to kind of get him broken down in range of your druids because once the druids pop him open and they still have range to hit the rest of those balloons you're good to go and then your spikes will take down everything else you don't even get to get to see the spikes in action on this map because it's such an easy map and if you haven't already check out this video over here where i show you exactly how i create every single strategy that you see here on youtube using challenge editor in balloons td6